Okay, in this video, we're just going to look at how we can set up events in Google Analytics 4 without Google Tag Manager. So specifically in this video, we're going to look at how we can track phone number clicks on a website. So if we jump onto the website, we're just looking at tracking this part here. So if somebody were to click on a phone number, say anywhere on the page, so if we were to click on that, it's just going to sort of associate that as an event so we will have a phone number click event and you know this isn't always perfect I've clicked on it there and press cancel so you can see that it's it's not a perfect metric but it's quite a useful one so what we'll do is we'll jump back into um, Google Analytics 4 and we've literally just copied this over from a UA tag so it's just a, a new dashboard for Google Analytics 4 but you can see that we've got it set up so it's recording um, visitors and views so if you haven't got the uh, the data stream or the tag set up on your website yet you'll need to go back and, and do that before you follow this video um, th there's actually a video on that which I'll link up in the corner so you can follow that if you if you don't know how to actually install the GA4 tag um, but once you've got that done what we'll do is jump down into the admin and then we'll go to our data streams of which you'll have one set up already and then if we jump down under enhanced measurement if this is checked on and then we go to the cog here you can see everything we're recording so we've got page views by default and we've got scrolls outbound clip site search form interaction video engagement and file downloads so all really useful stuff to have but one thing i i do like to track on there like i say is the um is is phone number clicks so what we'll do is we'll jump into events and then under here we can create an event and like I say you know a lot of people will do this in Tag Manager but if you're the type of person that doesn't want to learn how to use Tag Manager and you're only really going to be adding a couple of simple events to GA4 then you know this is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. Um, if you've got other people running events alongside this, then I would probably consider using Tag Manager because it's probably better as like a, you know, a, a place where people can actually all use it in one place. But, um, you know, just for the odd change on kind of small sites, this, this is fine, really. So if we come in, we can go to create event and then we'll come in, click create. And then under the event name, uh, I mean, you can call this whatever you like, but um, I would call it something like phone number clicks. And you can see I'm using underscores here and all lowercase. And that's because, you know, the, the existing events are all lowercase and all use underscores. But if you try to do something like phone number, when you come out of it, it will tell you you can't do that. You can't use spaces in there. So, you know, you, you're going to need to to use underscores essentially to to bring it together so you, you can have uppercase letters in there uh, that's because we've got a space on the end you can have um uppercase in there but the trouble is you could have one called phone number clicks and one called phone number clicks lowercase and then they become two different events so like i say i i like to just do it this way so we've just got everything lowercase with underscores in the middle and then we'll jump down to this bit and we're just going to say event name equals click. So we're basically looking for any time somebody clicks on something on the site. And then we, we're going to sort of break it down a little bit here by saying if the, if the URL contains and then for a phone link on a website that is always going to contain tell semicolon and that's the thing that makes it link off to your phone book or to Skype or whatever it may be on whatever device you're on. So if it's got that in there, it's generally a phone number link. So that's our that's our kind of condition. We're looking for if they click on something and specifically if it has tell in there. And then we will keep all the parameters in and we'll just create our event. And then we can come back We'll just refresh that quickly and you can see under if we go to create event again you can see we've got phone number clicks here has been added under the created events and the good thing about this as well we can jump into the reports and we'll jump into engagement 
and then you can see events is here we'll jump into there and this is where we will see it day to day but also we can actually test the um, we can test it on the site as it is now so if we go up into real time you can see we've got these are our event conversions but we've just set it up as an event so it's going to show up in here with any luck if we refresh the page we'll just come down and say we just click on here we'll click on it once and then we've got one out of six events showing there and you'll just have to give it a you know a few seconds because it has to kind of pass that data back through to the uh, to the real time dashboard but you can see our standard events already that we've got in here anyway so you've got page views and engagements and then you can see our new one has just popped up there phone number clicks so we could click on it again and like I say, it's not it's not super accurate from this because I'm clicking on it and I'm not technically calling somebody. So you know, it's not it's not perfect, but it's it's still quite an interesting metric to have in your um, analytics because you can see what pages people are clicking to call you from. And if you're using Google Ads or similar, then it's uh, it's a really good uh, thing to have as conversion in Google Ads. But for me, uh, this site is just all running through SEO. So um, for me, I just track everything in GA4. You can see there now it's been clicked twice. And like I say, when um, when these events have all uh, when they're tracking each day, you can find out what pages uh, they've been clicked from and things like that, and where the referrals have come from. So. That's, that's really useful to, to kind of have all there. And um, in the next video, we're just gonna quickly run through how to do the same for email clicks. So, you know, if somebody comes in and they, they click on uh, an email link on the site, so they're not specifically submitting a form, they're just clicking on an email link. So yeah, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have, give the video a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, then please subscribe.